Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In uh, my last video, I, I was talking about the tipping elements in the climate system. Tipping elements are s parts of the climate system that can undergo very highly nonlinear shifts from one state to another state. So think of uh, a state change as being, for example, a phase change. You lower the temperature of liquid water, it stays water. You're just above the freezing point, it's still water. You know, lower the temperature slightly, suddenly everything freezes up and you get um, ice, which is a completely different state, obvious, obviously. So I've been talking about the this um, report from the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research which has a which which has a good introductory sort of overall view of tipping elements in the climate system. Now, of course, the devil's in the details, so there's there's lots of um, additional details, some of which I, I I've talked about last video, and other things are happening. So, I mean, the the key thing is that you know, you for example, think of ice melt in Antarctica. You know, with warming, if it goes from minus 40 degrees at the surface, minus 40 Celsius to minus 35 Celsius because of warming, you're not going to get ice melt at the surface. But the problem is, is that there's lots of the ice, especially in West Antarctica, is sitting on bedrock that is well below sea level. So as the oceans are warming around the continent, the water is, you get water incursions underneath the ice and it starts melting the ice um, quickly from below. Okay, same sort of thing in, in Greenland. Um, there's lots of areas that where the bedrock is, is retrograded. In other words, as you go further and further into the continent, um, then the water gets deeper so that um, when, when the buttresses that are holding the ice, the glaciers in place, like a cork in a bottle, are melted out, the ice will float up and can, can recess a lot more quickly, can melt a lot more quickly. So I was talking about the main tipping points um, that affect the cryosphere, namely the loss of Arctic sea ice which is ongoing, and I've talked about the blue ocean event, the BOE, and when it's likely to happen. I think by my best guess would be 2022, no ice in September at the end of the melt season um, in the Arctic Ocean, no sea ice. And then within a few years, no, the, the uh, duration of no sea ice would extend to August, September, October, and within a few more years, July, August, September, October, November, and within a decade, uh, you know, as a, as a um, guesstimate, uh, no sea ice um, year round. I mean, we're heading to that state. All, that leaves Greenland greatly exposed to rapidly increased um, melting. And also when you get sea level rise, then that lifts up you know, it's a global thing and that affects Antarctica. So the melt rates of Antarctica will also notch upwards. There's also, of course, the glaciers on mountaintops that are outside of Greenland and Antarctica. And these are rapidly melting out. And of course, these glaciers are very important for feeding the major river systems. So think of the some of the river systems in Asia and think of the glaciers in Him the Himalayas that feed these, um, these rivers and if the ice is gone, if the ice is melted out, there's no water storage and these rivers dry up and these rivers are crucial for feeding over a billion people in, in Asia, for example. So there's lots of additional tipping points to the ones that I'm talking about, but I'm, I'm just um, trying to focus on some of, the, some of the major ones. 
We know that the melt rate of ice from Greenland and Antarctica is doubling roughly every seven years or so. And if this trend continues, so this is this is um, been happening at least for the last um, three doubling periods, if you like. So seven, 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 last 21 years or so, a doubling every seven years. If this continues to, um, you know, continues at this rate with this doubling period, we're talking about massive sea level rise. And you can conservatively calculate on the back of an envelope that we'd be talking about something like seven meters of sea global sea level rise by 2070, which would immerse of course, uh, you know, the, a lot of the major cities, it would immerse coastlines ar around the planet. So let's go back to the video screen here, the computer screen. So Google tipping elements, the Achilles heel of the Earth system, and look at this website yourself. Okay, so I've been focusing last video and this video on the cryosphere entities. In subsequent videos, I'll talk about circulation pattern, um, tipping points, and biosphere uh, tipping, tipping components. Okay, now I was up to uh, Antarctica. So I showed a map here of the Antarctica, where the ice is, where the, the topography is. And I also showed the ice thickness. So this is the ice thickness um, in meters, 4,000 meters, 4 kilometers. So these are the thickest parts of the ice on the continent. And what you can see is this image is showing the melt, um, the, the uh, loss of, of ice from glaciers around the coastlines of Antarctica. So the for example, you know, this, a circle of this size is 100 gigatons per year. Now, these circles are larger, so this is a hu there's huge loss of, of ice um, here. This is uh, the calving is the, the, the dashed area, and the solid black is the melting. So you can see, you know, three quarters of this mass loss is from melting, one quarter is from calving, etc. This is all from calving. What we see is that as the um, as we lose more and more ice shelves, the mass flow of ice over the continent increases. It's like taking the cork out of a bottle. Now, this is the bathymetry around Antarctica. Okay, so the red is all up to about a thousand meters or a kilometer water depth. So what you can see is the, there's no finer scale here. Um, I couldn't find a finer scale image, but so you could see the water's a lot deeper here. It looks like the continental shelf is narrower compared to green, the, the one around the Arctic and also around Greenland. Okay, now what happens if, if all of the ice was gone off Greenland, this is what the topography, this is what the bedrock looks like. So anything green, green, yellows, and reds are all above sea level. And the blues, of course, are all below sea level. So this is uh, zero feet, two and a half thousand feet, five thousand feet. So what you can see is there's some areas here Okay, there's some areas here, the purples, that are between 5,000 and 7,500 feet below sea level. So over a mile below sea level in these regions. And there's a small area here, which is um, a mile, over a mile and a half deep. Just one small region right here. These regions, so, so basically a lot of the continent is below sea level. The ice is sitting on the bedrock below sea level. So this means that the ocean current, the ocean circulation patterns around Antarctica, they undercut and go into these regions and they melt the ice from below, which is very bad news, of course, because 
the ice melting at the surface will be minimal because the temperature is still well above zero. But when you get warm seawater incur infiltrating underneath the continent, it melts the ice from below. Then if there's enough melting, these ice shells become floating. And you can obviously see that they could be prone to catastrophic failure, mostly in West, the West Antarctic ice sheet. There's about five meters or so of sea level rise um, if the West Antarctic ice sheet goes. Greenland, it's about seven meters. Um, so that's a total of 12, adding those two together. Okay, so if we had 12 meters of sea level rise, most of it would be from Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheet with a little bit from East Antarctic um, and something from glaciers and also from water expansion. Um, if all of the ice on Greenland, if all of the ice on Greenland and Antarctica was to go, we're talking about 72 to, you know, perhaps even 80 meters of global sea level rise. Now, the other thing I was talking about is the Yodoma um, permafrost. So this is the area here. Um, this, is the, you, this is the permafrost that is on the continental shelf here. And this is the permafrost that is on land. So we're seeing tremendous warming in the Arctic right now. So let me um, first I'll remind you, um, this is my website, paulbeckwith.net. Um, you can go through and you can search for, um, see previous videos. And, uh, you know, I try to have this updated, you know, at, at least once a week, usually a, a couple times a week or sometimes even three times a week. Um, so paulbeckwith.net, have a look. And this is my Twitter um, handle is at Paul H. Beckwith, so please um, please uh, follow me, and I endeavor to follow you if you follow me. Um, this is my previous video where I talked about abrupt change that's not being considered properly in the, um, in the IPCC 1.5 document. A couple things I um, retweeted recently is this is... Um, I want to find the Arctic. Here we go. Um, okay, so this is the, um, in the next, um, this was posted just on October 17th, so just yesterday. We're heading to a very warm Arctic winter. In the next 16 days, the Arctic will face incredible temperatures, 20 to 24 degrees Celsius above average. So that's the temperature anomaly taken at two meters, the global forecast system, the U.S. model, and it's an anomaly relative to the temperature average on at the particular time and day from 1981 to 2010, the climatology. And what you can see is this is the scale in degrees Celsius. Here's uh, this is North America and Greenland and the Bering Strait, um, Iceland and Svalbard. And what you can see is you can see really large, so this is cycling through um, at six hour intervals. Um, and the date is here. So this is the projection, the forecast. And what you can see is incredible temperatures, incredible temperature anomalies. Um, the Arctic is very, very warm. Um, and this is a very bad thing, of course, for the sea ice. Um, and uh, so I go through, there's lots of interesting posts here. This is the sea ice sickness, the, the um, blue ocean event or uh, blue ocean sea state. I like that acronym, the BOSS, BOSS event, B-O-S-S, -S, blue ocean sea state. Um, and uh, lots of posts here. You can see the Arctic sea ice extent. Um, and this is the document here. The, um, this guy suggested that a, a video be done on this. Now, I had a video last year, Climate Tipping Points from Cascading Feedbacks, and this is kind of an update uh, video. Anyway, thank you for listening.